Hey, I'm Captain Jim Hanley. Not only I bring you great fishing tips on how to catch walleye, bass, muskie, perch in Lake Erie, but also I like to bring you maintenance tips that will help you save some money by maybe not having to go to the dealership to have that done or you know whatever it might be. Today I'm going to change my lower unit lube and I wanted to show you how I do it and some fascinating new features on newer motors that you don't see on those old ones. Hey, if you enjoy content on this channel, please like and subscribe. I really appreciate it. Let's get started. All right, here's some of the equipment you're going to need to change your lower unit lube. Make sure that you have the right size nut on your um, breaker bar or your uh, torque wrench in my case. Mine is a 1 and 1 16 that fits this hub nut. A quart of lower unit lube. In my case, it's SAE 90 weight. A pump bottle to load up the uh, lower unit after you've drained it out. Make sure you have cardboard and have dedicated grease buckets or oil buckets, which I have. I have a, one for draining the oil, then I have one for pouring it in, and I pour it back into the old bottles and take it in to be recycled. Make sure you have the right size socket for your plugs that are going to drain the lower unit. All right, let's get started. The first thing we got to do is remove the nut. And that's one of the things I was talking about before, about the features on the new motors. You notice in here there is no cotter pin, there's no tab or anything like that. Let me show you how that works. You want to have these things torque pretty good. I have mine probably around 80 to 100 pounds, foot pounds. Once you get it to this point, you can just take your... Take your nut off, it'll get loosened up, and you can take it off by hand. Make sure you keep things in order, and I'm going to show you something right here that is the new feature on newer motors that keeps them in place without a without a uh, cotter pin or a, or a lock nut. All right, let's check out the features on these washers that come off. There's a thick one, see a thick one right there. Then there's a thin one and a little bit thicker one. That one in the middle actually has a bevel to it. So when you compress the nut onto those three, that washer has enough, oops, sorry, that washer has enough torque on it to push against that nut because this motor of mine will do 6,200 RPM, which is a lot. You surely don't want that nut flying off and that prop going airborne. So. Make sure that you torque it down the right way and have those in that sequence when you put it back on. Thick, thin, thick. Put it back in that order, you'll be in good shape. All right, so once we've removed the nut, we can pull our prop off. Make sure you take it off nice and easy. These are super heavy. This is a four blade stainless steel Merc prop. And I wanna make sure that I don't ding any of my threads I take it off. Take it off, put it on cardboard, get it out of the way. All right, so now we're going to move these two nuts right here. 10 millimeter. I'm going to remove the top one first so that when the bottom one uh, is released, we'll drain right into our pan. Make sure you have your pan ready. Just loosen that baby up. Make sure you put those aside so you don't lose them. And check your gasket. If you buy a kit, they come with new gaskets. Mine's in good shape. I can use this again. I'm not worried about any leaks, so I'm going to... Just save that one, get ready, because now I'm going to lower this down. Get ready. All right, so as soon as you move, remove this one, fluid's going to start coming out. I'm going to lower her down, and she'll start draining. While it's draining, stick your finger right where it's coming out. Take a look at... Your finger, make sure that there's no um, particles in there. Let's see if we get this in focus. Just rub it. You'll be able to feel it if there was any, any grit or anything like that in there. It's very important to make sure that you don't need a repair because putting it away for the winter, this will be the time of the year to have it done. Check that out. Very important. So now just let that drain until it's all out. It's going to take about 15, 20 minutes. While you got your prop off, make sure you don't have any fishing line stuck inside of that little seal right there because that could blow your lower unit out. Check for fishing line on a regular basis anyway. Pull that prop off a couple times during the summer. Make sure you don't have any line in there because that will make for a bad day. All right, so there's a couple of options for putting 
lower unit lube back into your lower unit. You can either buy the tube. You'll need probably three or four of these. I think that would equal a uh, quart. Let's see, 16 ounces, 32. Yeah, you need four of these. Put them in, you snip the end off. Almost like a caulk gun, snip it off and then squirt it in there. It's a lot more work. So what I do is I have uh, quartz and then I have the uh, dispenser with the pump. So this is my old bottle that I save here. Here's the new one. Let's convert it over. Take it off of there and put it in here and I'm ready to go. This has a, uh, this one has a cap on it. So as soon as I'm ready to put it into the lower unit, I'll show you what's going on. So something else I've done in order to get more lube out, I've lowered my tongue jack down so that the front end of the boat's lower and I can put more negative trim into the motor and more will drain out. All right, now here comes the fun part, refilling the lower unit up. We have our pump bottle. We take our little cap off here. Make sure you put the cap someplace where you know where it is on top of the cavitation plate looks good here. I'm going to put it in the bottom. You put it in the bottom hole and you're going to pump from the bottom up so that by the time it uh, fills up, it'll be coming out of that top hole. Take your time. This is only a plastic thread here and you can really screw it up if you don't take your time. Make sure you get it in there far enough that it seats because otherwise it will, it will leak out. So get it in there until that plastic seats. There we go. So now what we're going to do is we're going to pump this up until the grease comes out of the other hole. All right, keep, keep pumping until, there we go. You see it's starting to come out. All right, I'm just going to put an extra squirt in there. And now I'm going to stop and I'm going to raise up my lower unit a little bit. All right, so I've raised up the lower unit. Now what I'm going to do is put the top plug back in. I'm going to inspect my gaskets. I change my gaskets about every second time that I change my lower unit lube. You can change them each time if you want, but mine are in good shape. So I'm going to put the top one in first to avoid all of that grease coming out. Stop the, the flow a little bit. Airflow is what it's all about. So we're going to put this one back in. This is really a messy job, folks. So make sure you have lots of towels and rags and what not around. All right, so put the top one back in. Tighten her down a little bit. Not too tight, but so you know that it's seated. All right, so now I'm going to take the lower one out, and then the lube's going to start to pour out. So make sure that you're kind of ready with everything at one time. We're going to remove the, the uh, source our pump bottle, plastic sleeve right here, and get the other one ready because as soon as you take this out, it's gonna start flowing out. Try to avoid too much mess, and, and she's out. Here it comes, so we're gonna get that plug in there as soon as we can. Yep, good, we didn't lose much. All right, once we get her in there, on there my fingers are so greasy this lower unit lube is super super slippery but it's doing its job all right so now got that accomplished I'm gonna put my cap back on my pump bottle here put that away till the next time I need it it'll be ready to go and here's some advice buy one of these pump pumps no matter what no even if you buy the the tubes put it in here and refill a, a bottle up each time. It's so much easier than trying to put it in here each time. So let's move on to our next step, which is cleaning it up for the most part. But remember that when you put this in the water, you're gonna see oil rings around there because you're never gonna get all this oil out until it runs through a few times and the exhaust pushes it out. So start doing a little cleanup now, but I'm gonna drop it back down and let more of that drain right onto my cardboard. All right, so now I'm gonna take my empty bottle, take the old lower, lower unit lube, pour it in here and dispose of it with all my engine oil and everything else at my buddy's place. They recycle this. And now for the final stage of our lower unit lube change, 
you're going to have grease coming out of here for a while because it's laying in there. You can't quite get it all, but once you get in the water, you're going to see those um, oil rings or stains coming off your lower unit. So just know that's there. If you come back at the end of the day and you still got them there, then recheck it. Something's not right. So we're going to put our prop back on. And the first thing we always do is some good old mercury 2,4-C grease. Make sure you use it generously on your prop shaft everywhere because you don't want your prop sticking on here. Put it on there on the threads all over so your prop will never, never stick. This is amazing stuff, so make sure you put it on there nice and generously and you're in good shape. All right, so now I'm going to put our prop back on. And make sure you put it on real carefully. Those splines have to line up. Mine went right in. I think that's the first time it's ever gone right in. So that's a good thing. So once again, let me repeat. On newer motors, so this is a, uh, a 2020 Mercury 300 Verado. We do not have any tabs anymore. We don't have a cotter pin. We've got three washers. We've got a thick one. A thinner one and a thick one. That thinner one, now we'll see if we can get it on camera, we showed you before, has a little bevel. So when you put pressure on with that nut, it squishes this thing. Modern technology, and it's not going anywhere. So we put those on, put our prop nut on, make sure that goes on nice and easy. These are pretty fine threads. Get her torque down here. Do it by hand for as long as you can. Get your block of wood. And now we're going to do righty-tighty. Get my fingers in here. All right. Get that out of the way. Put that on there. And I'm going to go to about 80 pounds. And she's good. She's ready to go. So now I'm just going to watch, make sure everything was good. Next time I put it in the water, and we'll be ready to go. Make sure you do a good cleanup so your wife lets you do it next time and uh, you'll be ready to go. Just save yourself probably about 100 bucks by doing it that way and you're in good shape. Hey, I have my claw tile shirt on right now. I'm part of Citizens Against Wind Turbines in Lake Erie, so I'll put the uh, website on the lower part of the screen. They want to put turbines in Lake Erie, the governor of New York and whatnot. We just don't want turbines in the lake. It's a great lake and uh, super efficient, lots of fish in there and everything else. So. Anyway, hey folks, enjoy all this beautiful creation because it was made just for you. See you in the next video.